Hello, for today's video lecture we're going to be talking about the equations of motion for the polar coordinate system. So, uh, with Newton's second law and the force mass acceleration method, uh, the force mass acceleration method uh, in kinetics builds directly on Newton's second law, uh, which states that the sum of forces uh, is equal to the mass times the acceleration. Um, so, if we add the known and unknown values into this equation, it becomes known as the equation of motion. So, say we know something about forces, we can put that in there, solve for the acceleration. Uh, it is important to remember that force and acceleration are vectors, though. They have a magnitude and a direction. Uh, so, in many cases, we're going to break this down into components. Uh, for polar coordinate system, we're going to break this down into particularly r and theta components. Those are two directions that we're going to be using. Uh, so by solving this equation, uh, or equations when we break it down, we can find either the forces given accelerations or find the accelerations given the forces. All right, so we're going to have two equations of motion for the polar coordinate system, like I said, uh, and that's going to be the forces and accelerations in the r direction uh, and the forces and accelerations in the theta direction. Uh, so the polar coordinate system, again, is employed in instances where we're kind of tracking an object from some ground point uh, or in instances where we have rotational motion. Uh, it's going to be particularly important when we deal with rigid body uh, kinetics later on. All right, so the forces part uh, in the polar directions, uh, we're going to fill in details by drawing a free body diagram. So uh, for our system, we might have, you know, maybe we're tracking some rocket with a satellite dish. Uh, and the rocket's at some ground point, that's our origin point, the rocket, or the, sorry, the satellite dish is at the ground point, the rocket's somewhere out in space. Uh, it's going to have an R direction going from the satellite to the rocket, and then theta direction is going to be 90 degrees counterclockwise from that. Uh, and I'm going to have maybe some value theta, and, uh, which is going to be the direction of the R direction, and some value R, which is the distance uh, from the satellite dish to the rocket. All right, so all of this is uh, building up to the force. And so say I've got some very large thrust force. Uh, and in this case, it is going directly up, which is some angle phi uh, from R up to the force. So we might need to use some geometry to solve for phi. I'm using phi in this case because we're already using theta down here uh, as part of the R direction. All right, so. It's important we break this, these forces down into r and theta components. Same thing if I'm given some known acceleration vector. Uh, and in this case, I'm going to use the phi angle. So uh, f times the sine of phi would be the force in the theta direction. Uh, and then f times the cosine of phi is going to be the force in the r direction. So we always want to break those down uh, into r and theta components. All right, so the accelerations part uh, we're going to fill in details by looking back to kinematics, uh, particularly kinematics for polar coordinate systems. So in examining kinematics for polar coordinate systems, we found that the acceleration in the r and the theta directions to be, uh, well, acceleration in the r direction was r double dot minus r theta dot squared. Uh, and r, again, refers to the distance between kind of our center or origin point and the body that we're looking at. And then theta is the angle, uh, and as kind of the satellite dish tracks the rocket, that angle theta is going to change. Uh, and then in the theta direction, again, different from theta the angle, uh, it's going to be r times theta dot, or theta, theta double dot, it's double derivative there, uh, plus 2 times r dot times theta dot. Uh, so if I know things about r and theta and r dot and theta dot and r double dot and theta double dot, I plug those in, I can actually find values for acceleration there. All right, so we're using all of those pieces, and the whole process, if we walk through this, um, is going to be similar to uh, solving a statics problem. It consists of three steps. We set up our free body diagram. We're going to draw the body separated from its surroundings. Uh, with the polar coordinate system, sometimes I will leave my kind of origin point off to the side um, so that I know what my r and theta directions are. I usually draw the r and theta directions in as well. Uh, then we're going to draw in all known and unknown forces. So I like to use red for that, uh, as well as key dimensions and angles. So if we know values for R, I might want to put that in. And I use blue for any key dimensions, any key angles in this case. Uh, finally, we're going to draw in the acceleration vector. So if I know the acceleration, uh, I'm going to use a blue dashed vector for that value. 
uh, include the magnitude and the direction if I know those pieces as well. Um, next, once we have our free radar diagram, we're going to write out our equations of motion. So we want to break all of our forces uh, down into r and theta components, uh, break our, all our accelerations down into r and theta, theta components if they're given, uh, or I'm going to use those kinematics relationships I talked about in the last slide uh, and put those in for acceleration. Uh, so if we need to, we can supplement this with some kinematics equations. The important part uh, is I need to, I've got two equations with kinetics. Um, if I've got more than two unknowns that I'm solving for, I'm going to need to add in some kinetics pieces, maybe to relate some of the unknowns uh, as well. So once I've built up enough equations that I am matching the number of unknowns with the number of equations, uh, the last part is just math. I want to solve the equations for any unknowns, uh, pull out all of your algebra tricks uh, to, to solve those equations. All right, so with that, that's all I've got for this video lecture. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again.